Hey everyone, Sir Owen Disney here. It is Wednesday afternoon and I thought it was a great time to shoot out a brand new Halloween Horror Nights video. Basically because we have some brand new information that has come our way and I want to talk about all of it. Now before we get started, I do want to say that there are some now concrete information out right now. Some more concrete information. Like I talked about during the last video, the Rocky Horror Tribute Show is returning this year, which means that and Bill and Ted's Excellent Halloween Adventure will be our two shows for the event this year. So the speculation about the Jack the Clown show, whether it was a game show or a reality show or what it was going to be, that's null and void now. So Jack will be coming to the event, I'm pretty positive, and if you believe anything from what I'm about to talk about in these clues, it's a guarantee he's coming to the event, but it will not be as a host, or in this case, a ringmaster. No, he'll be involved in a different means altogether. Now, there's another tidbit of information that just got released as well, and that was the fact that a few days ago, a brand new permit appeared out of nowhere, and this permit is not listing any specific location. It's quite interesting, actually. I would say that this permit obviously just hasn't been updated yet. <laughs> Apparently it hasn't even been paid for, according to looking at the uh, website. But I will say that there is some interesting information on it. It's called uh, BLD 2014-03977. It was released, actually, <clears throat> was actually released yesterday. So, with that being said, we have a new maze location, but we don't know exactly what it is or where it's going to be yet. So, that information is probably to come in the very future. Yes, because the S-word is no longer spoken anymore when it comes to Halloween Horror Nights updating. Right, Heather? So, yeah, one person will get that and she knows who she is. Shout out. So, let's talk about two things before we uh, finish this video. Since we just got started, let's talk about our Cassie Clues and Dr. Jimmy's cryptic performances. So, we'll start with the Cassie Clues. Now, of course... Mystic Freak has been given these Casilda clues through emails, and thankfully she is sharing them with all of us, and these clues are linking to what appears to be our Houses and Scare Zones for the event this year. Coincidentally, Dr. Jimmy's cryptic performances are leading us to our Houses and our Scare Zones. So, it sounds to me like they're definitely not working together. At least I don't think they are. Hmm but they are leading us down the same path. They're twisting us and turning us every which way, but they're leading us down the right path. Both of them, regardless if you're trying to decrypt show tunes or you're trying to decrypt just random riddles that are completely out there. Either way, if you're trying both ways, you are having some enter entertaining time speculating. So, yeah. Well, let's start with the first one. This was the Casilda Clue 10. It said, basically, there was an image that was broken apart, numerous pieces. Numerous pieces of it. And there was some wording that said, flesh caught in a broken machine, but don't fret. D dare to wear a foolish face. Well, once this was finally put together and this was done on Horror Night Nightmares, once we saw this image, this guy came off looking very, um, let's just say Mad Max-like. Not obviously, he's not Mel Gibson, but he'd be something that I could imagine in a Mad Max or to go, go from Halloween Horror Nights lore, a doomsday maybe. Very futuristic, very steampunk looking. And he's got this red, orangish mohawk, which kind of reminds me a little bit of like Chucky's hair. And he's got like face paint, but not only around his eyes. And it's a gear. And then he's got these horrendous teeth, which kind of remind me a lot of how Jack the Clown's teeth actually look. 
and maybe playing into the fact that it also could potentially be connecting to Pennywise in that form as well. I'm not saying this is connecting to Stephen King, it or Pennywise itself, I'm saying those type of teeth. Those, like, really scary looking teeth. So, what are we looking at here? Well, the first thing that pops out is everyone jumps on the Bioshock train. And apparently there is something in Bioshock that looks a little bit like this guy. Not exactly sure I'm going to go that direction. I said we're going to get Bioshock eventually. I don't think it's this year. And I said in January that our game house this year would be Dead Space. But I don't believe that either anymore. I think we are getting a, uh, a space where you can only hear someone scream. Or can you? But not necessarily Dead Space. I'm talking about a completely uh, different property altogether. Now... Then, there was some speculation that this could be something in the house. Or maybe this could be a new version of something. It could be our face-off clue, potentially. You never know. That's a possibility. This guy looked really, really evil. I'm not gonna lie. And it was interesting because there was something that was mentioned by Legacy on Horror Night Nightmares that connected it to Saws and Steam. Now, there has been speculation since last year, like I said, we're all waiting in line, playing heads up with everyone, and waiting, some drinking, some not, and sure enough, we were all speculating about what was coming to the event in 2014. Well, a lot of things came to mind. Some sequel houses were mentioned, talking a lot about nightingales and talking about catacombs, and then mentioned another house which was kind of just brushed I heard it once and only once and only from one person I cannot recall who it was but I remember hearing it once and that was the fact that we could be seeing a potential sequel to Saws and Steam which of course started out as a scare zone went to a house and we could see a sequel here based upon where we go from there and the storyline now could this be maybe Saws of Steam Saws and Steam Carnival of Flesh Maybe steampunk clowns in the Saws and Steam uh, universe, possibly? I doubt it, but it's interesting. And there's been some also back and forth on the Tumblr of Dr. Jimmy, and I'm mentioning this out of context, but I still want to mention it anyway, and that was the fact that there's been a connection to Masquerade, of course, from Phantom of the Opera, which was the first cryptic performance. Now, Masquerade has been connected to a lot of things. Obviously, Masquerade has been connected to Halloween. Masquerade, I connected to Insidious. And Masquerade is now going to try to be connected to a video game property. Well, when asked what if this video game property was a certain Masquerade, the answer was, Masquerade may not be the game of which you speak, but there may be other games involving the undead as well. So, then, of course, my mind immediately jumps to Resident Evil, because obviously I'm not a gamer, so I wouldn't know anything. But then some people started mentioning Fallout, and the fact that there are characters in the game called ghouls, and apparently what they are basically are decrepit, rotting, zombie-like mutants. Okay? So, we got this, and it was really interesting, but we didn't know where we were going to come from it. And then, right after that, we got our third part of the Who Am I. So, it is making me believe that the Who Am I very well could be the same person, potentially. Or somebody we don't even know. But I think I'm going in a different direction in this one. It said, I served the chaotic prince after his ruthless retribution. Forever bound to the vessel, I shall see his restitution. Well, the vessel, of course, is the Cane of Souls, and that's exactly what it was. It was basically a broken Cane of Souls with a hypnotic, like, picture in the middle. Like, you know how you have, like, the hypnotic, like, going around in circles? Yeah, that was right in the middle. Well, there's a lot of ways to look at this. When you think of the Chaotic Prince, obviously you think about the fact that the one major connection I have to Jack the Clown immediately is to call him Mr. J, obviously, making the connection of the Joker and giving him the fact that he is Fear's Agent of Chaos. 
Well, when Jack dethroned Oddfellow, who was literally the king of the original carnival, it's basically giving an implication that our speaker is talking about someone who has served under and is currently being abused in some form by Jack. This is mentioned by Dr. John Overwatch on uh, HNN. Furthermore, it's mentioned that what I did not know was a little bit more about the backstory of Jack the Clown is the fact that he did not kill Dr. Oddfellow, he simply enslaved him, potentially in the Cane of Souls, and it made sense there. Basically said after Jack got his revenge, Oddfellow is now somehow escaped, and now he wants to get revenge on Jack. It would also explain why we had the utilization of the uh, Dr. Oddfellow poster from the last one. Well, on top of that, there's another chance that potentially there's somebody that served Oddfellow that we don't know about, who obviously has a connection to Jack and obviously wants to get revenge. Let's say Oddfellow had somebody we didn't know about, somebody like a right-hand man that preferred to be behind closed doors and behind the curtain. And when Jack did what he did, this person went away, but swore revenge and to get rep... Well, good God. Get retribution for what happened to Oddfellow. This could be possibly what we're referring to. Now, obviously Jack is the chaotic prince, and basically this person that we're hearing from is the person that is bound to serve in basically slavitude to Jack or whomever controls the Cane of Souls, which as of now we don't know who controls the Cane of Souls because of course Fear banished Jack back in the Lantern and obviously someone let Jack out. Potentially a, uh, a master of sorts if you want to go by the old hate to fly uh, adage that we got several months ago. So, the speaker is speaking, separating the words his, and, his or her, depending on if it's a male or female, themselves from the people involved in their retribution and the restitution. It's not said in the, fir in the first person. They're speaking of them, not themselves. This is something the Mystic Freak said. So, what is this? What is this connection? And what is this who am I? Well, I think personally that I'm going to say what I said earlier that was maybe proven false. I'm saying it's a possibility this is alluding to chance. And obviously, a lot of people on the boards have been saying something that, like I said, I don't really know much about chance. I know she's hot. That's about all I know. And I know she's basically Harley Quinn. Literally, Jack called her his Harley Quinn. But said it as Harlequin, so obviously you don't want to you want to tick off DC. So yeah, the Harlequin, and I don't know anything about her backstory, and we really haven't released anything about her backstory. But to me, she comes off very airheaded, kind of like how Orlean Sorkin did the voice in Batman the Animated Series, and then Tara Strong went on to do it later. Well, the thing you have to understand about Chance is the fact that, like Harley Quinn, Chance may be a lot more educated and advanced than we all thought. There may be a lot more than more to her than meets the eye. Don't forget, Harleen Quinzel is a doctor. Maybe Chance, her identity is a doctor as well. Or maybe it's something I mentioned a while back, that I alluded to the fact that we have Casilda Carcosa could legitimately be the real identity of Chance the Clown. You never know. It's possible. It would explain a whole lot. I don't know exactly why Chance wanted to blow the spots for everything, but basically to get people to think. She's not the Riddler. She's the Joker's minion. It's a different thing. But still, maybe we're looking at something like that. It's a possibility that... There's more to Casilda than meets the eye, and maybe Casilda is Chance. And like I said, that may sound stupid coming from some of you. And you may think, oh, and you're losing your mind. And my response is, well, I don't know enough about backstory, and Chance never really got any. 
she basically doesn't really speak very much, but does every once in a while, and basically just see her on the arm of Jack. That's basically all she does, and of course she she kills for him because that's how it works. But we don't really get a backstory of her at all. I think this is our backstory, and I remember talking about last year, um that we were going to get our horror homecoming in 2015, and I think that will happen. And I think that Fear is going to uh, let the lantern loose and bring our old icons back. Now, obviously we have Jack this year, and we have Chance this year. Well, I think that it'd be really interesting, and I said this in a, a previous video, that we really go into the Joker-Harley Quinn relationship, and you take it to a higher extreme. For those of you that want to get rid of Jack the Clown, Charles, I'm looking at you, sir, I would say that this is your way to do it. Next year, why not have it be revealed that Chance is the one who set everyone free, all the former icons, and Chance is the one who really wants the retribution, and Chance is the one who will eventually kill Jack the Clown and take her spot as the icon from the event. That is something to think about. And I really think it's a possibility that could be the case. Now granted, that could also be just wishful thinking and the fact that I'm like overly thinking everything right now. If you know me personally, you know exactly what I mean. But the thing about it is, is you have to understand the way my mind works is I'm trying to work around every single possible angle to every situation. And that's one of the things that was mentioned, so I thought it was a good idea to bring it up. Well, then we get, after our Casilda Clue goes down, we get our next Dr. Jimmy cryptic performance, and it came in the form of a redo. And the fact that things necessarily may not have changed, but the clue as it is is not applicable, and there's something that's a lot better of a song to fit with this. And instead of using Heart from Damn Yankees, he utilized I Get a Kick Out of You from Anything Goes. It was a 1938 mm, play, and obviously the song is written by Cole Porter, and most people would know it by the chairman of the board himself, Frank Sinatra. Now, there's a lot of things you could look into this, honestly. And there's some connections that people could take with maybe vampires, talking about the, the Faust connection with making a deal with the devil to get what you want, and basically giving their soul over the angel heart connection that I talked about a while back that I wasn't positive it was going to be that. Well, there's always that, and there's really not much you can say about this one right now. There's a lot of connections that you could possibly make from this, but, you know, it's not really jumping out at me. Not at this point. I will say that there is some interesting connections to Aladdin, and that would play up into, like, an evil genie, potentially. But, you know, that's only because of the particular Tumblr photos from Aladdin that Dr. Jimmy's been posting a lot of lately. And it has been mentioned, word for word, that sometimes his posts on the Tumblr are clues, but sometimes they're not. This is his words, not mine. Sometimes the t-shirts worn in the videos are clues, but again, sometimes they're not. Sometimes the clues are carny, and only the cleverest will get them, but sometimes they're so blatant that nobody does. Never assume anything. You know what happens when you assume? So, I added that, you know, that you assume. The, I wanted to reference the Slam and Salmon, so there's that. So, what do we got here? Well, it's interesting because there's also a picture Dr. Jimmy posted of the Baba Yaga, who is also another infamous boogeyman, and also has a connection to two sisters of the same name, and they can basically shapeshift into pretty much anything. Well, could that be a connection? It's a possibility, and then you have to look at another thing. Now, Dr. Jimmy posted a image from another um, 
ooh, excuse me, another film called Goodbye Charlie. And Goodbye Charlie was the fact we've been talking about Charlie, all the pictures of Charlie Brown and from the connections to Trick or Treat, and he posted Goodbye Charlie. But he said, also, maybe I should have said Bye Bye Blackbird instead. Well, the first thing that pops to my mind immediately is the fact that that means that we 86 the Nightingale's sequel house that everyone was talking about happening. Could be, possibly, but you never know. Now, if you want to connect Blackbirds, you also connect that to Sweeney Todd, but there's really no real connection there. So let's say that that's gone. No more Nightingales. They save it for 2015, or they just won't do it. For now. So that's anyone's guess what that's going to happen with. Well, I want to talk about some Charlie connections, shall we? Real quick. And let's uh, go into that. Charlie is the next code word. We have two of them, actually. But I'm going to go into that, and then I'm going to mention our final cryptic performance that we actually got today. As a matter of fact, it was a couple hours ago. So what's Charlie? First thing that comes to mind with me and Charlie is the fact that we're talking about Charlie McPherson. Charlie McPherson, for those of you that are unaware, was a patient and a victim of Dr. Barry Agana and was part of the Dead Exposure House. And Dead Exposure was a very, very popular house and unfortunately I did not get to go through. Now, the same kind of lighting effects were utilized somewhat in House of Horrors in 2012, but not exactly. This is more of a very dark and then boom, light, right in your face style house. Very freaky according to what people have told me that were able to go to the house. So maybe this is leading to a dead exposure sequel, potentially. But if we're following Charlie, we're going into the afterlife, and we went to afterlife last year, so yeah, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it may be a different way to get to a lot of things. And Charlie doesn't only connect with Dead Exposure, he also connects with Zombie Geddon as well. So, we have that connection. Well, I'm thinking it's a possibility that could end up being the case. It's a very good chance that we could be getting a Dead Exposure sequel house. You never know, it may be a good possibility. Because it was mentioned today, about 25 minutes ago, that I asked... Mike Aiello, personally, on the Horror Nights Orlando Twitter. I said, would you consider a sequel to an already established maze, i.e. Havoc Derailed last year, to be a new original maze? He said yes. So yeah, basically what we're saying is, sequel houses are on the table, so Charlie could end up being an original property, that is getting a sequel, and it's a very good possibility that very well may be the case. So, I want to go into more of the things that Charlie could possibly be, and I'm going to go into that right now, actually. So, Charlie. Charlie could be Charlie Clouser. Charlie Clouser was a member of Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, he's the guy other than Trent Reznor that went into doing soundtracks instead, but <laughs> the difference is Reznor's got an Oscar. And he did a score for, among other things, for a lot of things, like the Saw series, and he did Dead Silence, and, but of course, both have already been utilized at Halloween Horror Nights. He also has worked on American Horror Story and Resident Evil Extinction from 2007. So, could that be the connection? Well, I doubt it, but you never know. It's possible. Another name that comes to mind is Charlie Brewster. Charlie Brewster was in Fright Night. More connection to that vampire property everyone thinks we're going to be getting this year, whether it's a scare zone or a house. Is this the connection to Charlie? No. And this also probably means that we can finally say 100% that we are not getting Trick or Treat this year. I think that if we get Trick or Treat, it will happen next year. Hollywood may still get it, but I don't know. I think if, at this point, I think they're going to share it. We're going to share it with Hollywood. But I could be wrong. It's a very good possibility I could be wrong. Well, Charlie is also the first name of Mr. Splitfoot, which was the connection of the Fox sisters, which I connected to Ghostbusters. And also could connect to The Walking Dead via the song. 
from Paris Motel. Well, there's also another connection to the voodoo house, the voodoo-inspired house that sounds like we're not getting at this point, and that is Charles Massacott Gandolfo, who was known as Voodoo Charlie. He's the founder of the New Orleans Historic Voodoo Museum. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, this is interesting because it comes to a lot of conclusions. What does this mean? What could this mean? I would say that, you know, this actually might be a connection to something else. And I will mention that in a second, because that came in the form of our latest Dr. Jimmy cryptic performance. This time, it was Dr. Jimmy on location, mind you, doing Pure Imagination from Willy Wonka and the, Charlotte Fa and the Chocolate Factory. The Charlotte Factory? is not even a word. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. So how happens you know that, folks. And this connection has obviously got a lot of people talking. Is this our Charlie cryptic performance? And I think it is. I think it is our Charlie cryptic performance. But there's some interesting things going into this. Obviously, Dr. Jimmy flips everything around. And the line is, hold your breath, make a wish, count to three. That's how it goes in the song. Dr. Jimmy says, make a wish, hold your breath, count to three. Now, that may be just something small and insignificant, but maybe not if you believe that we're getting an evil genie house this year, which is, it's not a great possibility, but I think it could happen. I think that's probably the least of the uh, possibilities I would uh, choose at this point. No offense to Tim out there, it's just not what comes to my mind. Obviously, when you look at this, the first thing, the first first thing that pops to my mind is the fact that this is potentially another sequel style house. And this would be Scary Tales 4. Now, Scary Tales has been a property that hasn't been used in six years. I had the first one in 2001, the second in 2002, then we waited six years to get our next property in 2008. Once Upon a Nightmare. How about Scary Tales Returns? And how about we use the works of Roald Dahl to do a creepy, twisted, evil versions of, yes, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and maybe utilizing stuff like the fantastic Mr. Fox and James and the Giant Peach. The problem with that is, is there should be, there's connections Obviously, I mentioned like stuff like the Gremlins, and I didn't mention anything like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. There's a lot of Disney connections with, with Dolls' work, so I don't know if they would go that direction or not. They have utilized Disney creations in their fairy tale formats previously in Scary Tales, so this could be a possibility as well. We never know if that's going to be the case or not. And it's interesting because you have a return to a property that most people, like, I can't say they forgot about it, but they returned to a property people weren't really considering to be a potential thing. And if you look at Dahl's work, his children's books are basically told from the view of a child. And there is an adult villain, and that adult villain is a mistreater of children. Yeah, a child catcher fits really well, because don't forget, Dahl's also behind Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Which led to a lot of speculation that we're connecting the Kitty Witty Winkies with pure imagination. Don't think that's the case. Unless we're talking about a house in a scare zone. And that also could be a possibility at this point. You never know. Now, there is only usually one good adult that counteracts the villains. This is basically referencing the abuse that Dahl went through when he went into uh, his boarding schools when he was growing up. There's a lot of dark humor and a lot of grotesque imagery and a lot of violence. So definitely fits Halloween Horror Nights for sure. So you, you never know at this point. I mean there's a lot of things that we could be looking at right now and if you look at the video 
Dr. Jimmy himself was showing his eye a lot. And a lot of eye, a lot of eye imagery. And like I said before, what happens, I said this on HNN, if you look at it from this perspective, you have two things. <clears throat> Number one, there is a condition that actually makes the eye see hallucinations. And we could be leading towards that. There's also a potential glass eye in this steampunk creature character that we had in the last Casilda Clue before the Who Am I Part 3. So Dr. Jimmy is showing his eye a lot and showing his eye, maybe I see you, potentially the return of Eddie. I don't know why that hasn't been mentioned yet, but I could be wrong. But no, that's not what I'm looking at. That's on the surface. Here's what I look at when I think about it from this perspective. So when you spin around, you get disoriented. And no, I'm not talking about disorientorium. I'm talking, even though I just watched the, uh, the, uh, making, the, uh, Art of the Horror, Art of the Scare, uh, amazing documentary on YouTube the other day. Check that out if you get a chance to see. What happens, you get disoriented, you get discombobulated, you spin around, and what happens? You need to refocus. And you need to maybe, like, get your bearings about yourself. This also happens when you're in the dark. And you need to let your eyes readjust to your new surroundings. Before, boom, it's right, it happens like a snap right in front of your very eyes. You, like, go from, I'm um, half asleep to, oh, I'm awake now. This also happens with a camera. So, yeah. As of this moment... Barring what was said by Mike Aiello on Twitter, the fact that sequel houses are considered to be original properties, new original properties, I'm going to say right now that as of this moment, until I hear something different, and I'm going to check one more time just to make sure I haven't heard something different in the time I've been chatting with you guys, I will say that it is a good possibility... that we might be getting dead exposure. We may be getting a return to dead exposure this year. It's a very good possibility we're getting that. Now, if we're getting the Scary Tales 4, then that could possibly be the case. It could possibly be maybe talking about, like we talked about the Child Catcher, and then we talked about Dr. Emmett Brown 1 mentioned something on his video about how you have the... Uh, Maybe a factory where uh, we utilize, maybe that is the Sweeney Todd connection. Don't forget Mrs. Lovett's got meat pies. And maybe the, uh, maybe the people that go into the factory are never seen again because they become uh, part of a meal potentially. <clears throat> the Motel Hell connection, you never know. That, like I said, that's, that's like Sweeney Todd connection. But then again, that's not... I don't know why we're talking about Sweeney Todd. I just connected that to the Blackbird thing from earlier. I could be way off on that one. I probably am. But yeah, I mean, what else could we be looking at? I mean, like I said, could we be doing a house based on the traditionals, potentially, with the candy connection to the Morphan Legion? That's a possibility. I'd say maybe, like, using the traditionals and doing a house out of it instead of a scare zone. I don't know, maybe this is a scare zone. You never know. You don't know exactly how Dr. Jimmy works. Why was Bob there? Obviously, Bob was there because she's always there. You never know. I mean, there's so many things. There's so many questions right there. You, you don't know what's going on. And it's awesome because this speculation has become really, really fun. So yeah, that's what I'm looking at right now. I mean, like I said, it could be like an original house based upon the traditionals, maybe. It could be, yes, the factory of turning people into candy. That'll work. Uh, maybe playing off the Leave it to Cleaver and HNN. H H N oh wow, long day. HHN lore potentially, like uh, like John connected it to. That's a possibility. Maybe it is that exposure, it's possible, or maybe it's something completely different. So, 
at least we're thinking about it, at least we're talking about it. So that's what I have for right now. I could be off, I could be wrong, but like I said, it's all about speculating right now. So we're not supposed to necessarily be right right now, we're just kind of hoping that we are. So yeah. That is the video for today, and hopefully you guys and girls out there enjoyed it. I'll uh, do another Horror Nights video whenever I get a chance to get some new information. You'll shoot out a new video out your way. And definitely want to continue uh, shouting out Dr. Jimmy for the awesome cryptic performances. I do want to shout out Mystic Freak for being able to give us access to the Casilda Clues. And to uh, Sean, Jeremy, and Brian, and Tim on Facebook and Twitter for being able to uh, get some information out that way. Uh, you guys are awesome too. It's been great collaborating with you to try to break these cryptic comments and cryptic performances and code words and all the craziness has been involved with solving puzzles over this uh, last several months since the beginning of the year, obviously. It's been really fun enjoying that. Shoutouts to the Horror Night Updaters, uh, my good friend Psychomasker Films and Dr. Emmett Brown 1, aka Vic, as well as Mr. Horror Nights and UKHHN and Deadly Fear 1283. Want to shout out Crazy Englishman, uh, The Thrill Seeker Network, as well as HHN Trogdor, HHN, HHN Fan I6, and Admiral HHN as well. So yeah, that's a shout out to all the uh, Horror Night updaters and to uh, all the ones that are enjoying these videos. I'll continue to make them. So that's pretty much all I got for the day. So thank you guys and girls out there for watching. And until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all I got to say about that.